400 small block in the back of his cat. That's unbelievable. It actually runs the skid steer. Check this out. This is super cool. Welcome back to the channel where it is full blown winter here in northern Wisconsin, Minnesota. Thank you guys for checking in. It's been a while since I've uploaded a video, but today we got to do a little bit of work on the Trans Am. And I wanted to tell you uh, kind of what's been going on or not going on in the background. Okay, so the last time I drove the Trans Am, well, the last few times, the starter seemed to be acting up. Uh, it, it really picked up its failure on the cruise for cancer last year. It's the same time that it took out the rear end on it. So, I happen to be driving in a monsoon and I'm assuming that the large amount of water that I was driving in actually took out the starter as well because I had an intermittent um, no crank with the key forward, just nothing would happen. I ended up getting a brand new AC Delco starter. This is off a of Rock Auto. It's not a rebuilt. This is a brand new one, but it's a much better price than you would get locally or whatever. So. I'm gonna stab one of them in. I've got a DEI heat shield that I had from an older car. I'm gonna wrap the starter on that. And uh, yeah, should be good to go after that. So I'm gonna install a new starter relay as well into the fuse panel there, just as a safe measure, because if it's not either of those things, the wiring looks all good. It may be a resistor key issue, but it's an intermittent issue, which makes it kind of tough to troubleshoot. So I'm um, just, just gonna go ahead and start with a new starter and a relay, and then uh, go from there. So, I got the car up in the air. Appears to be the OEM starter up in there. It's been next to long tubes for a while. It's uh, looking a little bit worse for wear, but I've got the battery disconnected up top, so I should be good to go to swap that bad boy out. And uh, yeah, I'll just uh, pick up after I swap out the starter. left off was that the starter relay appears to have been acting up. Now I manipulated a little bit when I was touching it and I swapped with the ignition relay. It's actually the exact same part number and looking it up on like Rock Auto for example, uh, it's exactly what it shows. So you buy one, it, it'll fit both and that gives you a good way to troubleshoot it. Now, the first time I tried to uh, crank the engine over with the new starter all installed, uh, nothing happened again, which tells me it was definitely not the starter acting up, which is too bad because you know, look at it this way. It was a hundred bucks down the drain, but I do have a new starter and it does eliminate that as a possibility. And with these intermittent electrical problems, it is really tough to chase sometimes. So what I'm going to do is put the original ignition, I'm going to swap these back to where they were, normalize everything. And I will put the, the starter relay back where it was and see if it does it again. If it does, I will uh, swap in this new AC Delco one that I got, just got at the local parts store. It's a few bucks more than on Rock Auto, but I got it right now, and it's uh, kind of a good time to test it while everything's down and whatnot. But what I'm gonna do is pull out this relay right here for the fuel pump. So I'm not gonna be sitting there and just uh, constantly running the engine or anything like that. So I'm gonna be cranking this a lot, and what I'm just gonna do to make sure that it's not gonna start or anything after maybe the first time till it dies or runs out of fuel is pull that fuel pump relay. So until then, we're just going to do a little bit of old school troubleshooting. I don't have a more comprehensive way to test this, so for now it kind of is what it is. And hopefully we've narrowed down our problems with this relay. But it could be the ignition cylinder, it could be the resistor chip key itself, um, it could be the neutral safety switch in the clutch pedal. I mean, it could be a number of things, and with intermittent electrical gremlins, as many of you well know, they can be 
tough to track down if you can't just test one component or the other, like uh, only on a relay or the neutral safety switch, you can uh, test its functionality. And it'll probably work five times, but one time it won't. So uh, these can be really time consuming and uh, believe you, not feeling real good if it just starts working out of nowhere, if you didn't narrow it down to one specific thing. Anyways, I'm gonna swap those back. We're gonna crank it a few times, see what happens. All right, no pump, that's good. Let's see if we crank. Yep. Man, every time, of course. All right, well, of course it works perfect now. And frankly, all that I can say to really account for that is I did monkey with this relay. So I'm gonna swap this sucker out just to be safe and I'll keep a spare one in the car, in the glove box. That's cheap insurance to have while you're out motoring around. But until it acts up again, I really don't have anything to go off of because it's, it's working. There's really nothing to test. So I'm gonna put that ignition relay back in. I'm gonna put my uh, new relay in there. And then what I'm gonna do is say it works just like it should. <laughs> so hopefully this little gremlin has gone away. But um, as many of you know, it'll more than likely rear its head yet again. Ooh, well, they're all in. Okay, so let's put this new AC Delco one in there and I'll keep that as a spare in the car because inevitably it'll fail when it's out on the road. Well, here's something dumb I noticed. I just happened to check in here too and it's something that I don't typically do on vehicles, but the cooling fan actually has an oversized fuse too. So I'll swap the 15 out for a 10. Just make sure everything's straight here and here because, you know, I'm sure most guys know it, uh, guys and girls out there working on cars, but if you don't, you don't want to oversize the fuse protecting the circuit that it's designed to protect. So, you know, maybe something's designed for a 10 amp fuse. If you put a 20 in it, you might overload a component on it and it could start a fire, for example. So uh, maybe that's not the best example. It'd be more like putting a 40 in a 10 or something where it's really gonna let the smoke out if something goes wrong. But you definitely don't wanna oversize your fuses, especially if they're spec'd from a manufacturer like that. It's uh, just asking for trouble. If you have to oversize it, you have a component issue. So I'll replace that real quick. Make sure these are straight. Just a little uh, quick tech tip. You do not want to oversize fuses. So let's continue on. So it's been a, it's actually been a couple of months since I've uploaded a video and it's uh, probably the longest break I've taken from uh, uploading anything on YouTube in a while for sure, you know, the last couple of years. But um, a couple of months ago, my wife and I had our second child. We've got a baby girl now and that's all been going on in the background. So uh, it's kind of funny, it seems like you know, having one kid is a lot of work, but having two seems like four times as hard as having one. It's kind of interesting. I actually didn't expect that. And talking to buddies and stuff that, you know, have gone through the same thing, have kind of said pretty much the same thing that, yeah, it's way harder than having one. Two is like, it's a lot. So uh, there's actually four of us in the house now. Everything's going good. Mom and baby are doing really good, which is awesome. You really can't ask for more than that. But what that also means is that stuff like the car and the track and you know some of the extracurricular stuff is really put on the back burner which is you know standard for most people and uh, I'm no exception to that so I got to do a little bit of maintenance to the car the Trans Am is still here as you'll see the snowmobile that was in the last clip is gone I've sold the trailer since then the motorcycles for sale I'm parsing down the extra things that are going on in life right now to the track, the car, my house, you know, family and career, stuff like that. So <clears throat> some of the extra stuff is pretty much just gotta take a sideline for a while. Uh, if the bike stays, I'll probably keep that around and uh, I'll ride it. I really love riding. I started last year, but um, again, it's just, it's one extra thing. It's another engine to maintain. It's, uh, you know, it is what it is. So I'm trying to make the most out of my time coming up this summer. And starting now, it was getting rid of a couple of these things and uh, really focusing on the car and then more importantly, focusing on the track right now, which uh, I'm going to continue to share on YouTube. But anyways, because you are watching the channel, you're going to see this stuff first. We're going to have five autocross dates this summer out of the track. So you have five opportunities to come out and either participate or watch uh, as a spectator 
uh, autocrossing. I technically can't drift out there right now per my insurance coverage, so I'm going to cross that bridge in a while, but talking to the insurance providers is one of the more difficult things that I've ever done, which I actually didn't expect because, you know, um, in my naive perception of it, I'm here to provide uh, them money and they'll give me coverage for a thing. But in motorsports, it just simply doesn't work that way. It, uh, it's been a big eye opener. We're gonna autocross right now. <laughs> There'll be no other stuff going on. So anyways, all that stuff aside, uh, we got five dates. So bear with me. The five dates I picked are May 6th, June 17th, July 22nd, August 12th, and September 23rd. So you can check those dates and everything out at the website at the link in the description. It's brmpwi.com. So the track is under many, many feet of snow right now. I haven't been out there at all this winter. And frankly, it's, you know, probably for the best. I'm spending some time at home. There's not much to do out there in the winter anyways. Um, I since sold the snowmobile. It's just pretty much shut down for the season. Uh, we've got pretty harsh winters most of the time up here. This one's been fairly mild, but we got a ton of snow as usual. You know, you know, maybe not relative to somewhere like people living by the Rockies or whatever, but we did get a lot of snow this year as always. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much just been on the back burner. So as soon as the weather breaks, which it's been nicer and nicer, we've got a fairly mild spring here. I'm gonna get out there as soon as I can. We're gonna bust a path into there, do some work in the garage, and uh, get reacclimated with our old friend, the Black River Motorsports Park. All right, guys, it is zero dark 30, and we're on a mission to go look at a C4 Corvette. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, don't buy a C4. It's an Opti Spark. I'm looking at a 93. So I know I said in an earlier segment that I'm getting rid of the extra stuff and clutter and whatever, but this is a good flipper. Uh, it appears to be like a giveaway car of some sort. You know, back in the day, 7-Up did Jeeps, they did Mustangs, and I'm sure other models and other, uh, you know, like Pepsi-type products have probably done vehicles as well. I assume this was like a Dr. Pepper car from back in the day, but that's not the case. The guy that uh, owns it put some Dr. Pepper <laughs> stickers on the doors and the hood and uh, some floor mats and stuff because he just likes Dr. Peppers. I must have drank me about 15 Dr. Peppers. <laughs> so it is what it is, that'll all come off, but I think this car all cleaned up um, and just kind of good to go. I really feel like it's underpriced as it sits, and right now it's not a good time to sell a car, but for a guy like me, it's a really good time to buy a car, especially because I believe the money is right. <clears throat> all right, so I checked out the car, and I'm just showing you this because I don't know like exactly when we might do this deal because right now it's raining and the guy, uh, nice guy, but it's tucked away in the garage. I looked at it. It does appear to be a really nice ride overall. I mean, it's gonna clean up really well, I think. So the car's got a lot of potential and it's on brand for what I do with the channel. I don't know if you'll be able to see it here. Creep a little, but right back there. So at any rate, we are going to do the deal at our soonest convenience and uh yeah i'm gonna get out of here the next time you'll see the car or anything we're going to be picking it up so we'll catch you guys then all right my mouth is numb from the dentist but i'm going to show you something before i leave the guy's house he's got a small block in his skid steer <laughs> all right yeah, yeah. 400, small block. 400 small block in the back of his cat that's unbelievable it actually runs the skid steer <laughs> check this out this is super cool Skids you in the front, small block Chevy in the back, super cool. So this dude does know what he's doing. I talked to my father-in-law and he said he worked right. on engines and stuff and he was not joking. That's unbelievable. Yeah, I got it all done. It took me Check that out. So anyways, that's what we're gonna show you. I'm gonna go off in the car and we're gonna go home. All right, so here it is. It's a 93 Corvette, Dr. Pepper stickers on it. Um, like I said, you put them on because he likes Dr. Pepper, but they'll come off. Got some kitty prints on it, but overall, it's going to be a pretty good project for the channel. It looks pretty straight overall, and is bone stock. And all you're going to hear running right now is a four-wheeler. So there it is. Let's hop in and go for a ride home. Real dirty. Seats are a little worse for wear, but... 
not the worst, but pretty cool. Not a bad buy. dirty but uh what do you expect for the money okay with a bunch of tapes it's got transparent roof it's got the solid painted panel roof and it's pretty much just ready to rock so let's get out of here because I was at the dentist, like I said, so I'll be pretty quiet here. Off we go. One cool thing about this car, it is a Z07 packaged car, which means a few things. I'll explain all that later. I'm talking like I got into a prize fight right now. We'll see you at home. Tires seem a little bit worse for wear, like they've got flat spots maybe, but uh, I haven't checked pressures and it's been sitting, so who knows, maybe it'll work itself out on the way home. Our steering pump makes a little whining noise right out of the gate, maybe it's a little hard to say. Let's see, I switched it to tour mode. And it, it feels soft. We're going to go to sport mode, see if it's a little stiffer. I guess it's noticeable changes. Yeah, it's more darty. The performance mode should be really noticeable. It's going to really stiffen it up. Mm, hard to say. We'll go back to tour and see what it feels like here. Oh yeah, it's softer. Okay, so I think the adjustable shocks work. That's a good thing, because they're not cheap. The system's kind of crude, but it's basically a, uh, like an early version of magnetic ride. Same idea, it's an adjustable suspension that Bilstein developed and put on these cars. It's a very early adjustable suspension system, or on-car, you know, active suspension, you can call it. <laughs> limiter actually. <laughs> Gotta make the tires round again, you know. Just listen to how smooth it runs. Put the fan on right now because it's warm, but God, that runs good.
have to go catch him but my dental work's finally wearing off so I can actually talk which is nice but this thing is starting to shine so I'm gonna finish the first stage of this and show you kind of what we're gonna effectively start with and this would be in most cases where it's nice out what you'd start with by washing it so I'm doing basically a waterless wash right now is what I would summarize this Okay, so I'm kind of on the second day of just monkeying with getting rid of these decals and I haven't even vacuumed the interior, done anything. I just gave the whole car basically a wipe down last night just to kind of see what I've got. And the Dr. Pepper decals are all off, but on the hood, you may be able to see it. It's hard to tell, but you see like in here, you can see the outline of some of the lettering on the sticker. and. It's kind of a hologram. It's really hard to tell on camera, but maybe with the right lighting, you'll be able to see it. You just gotta trust me. There's a P, pepper, you know, it's, it's right there. You can see where the sticker was. So I'm gonna have to compound or do a paint correction on the hood to uh, bring the surrounding area down to what was protected by the sticker, if that makes sense. So for whatever reason where the lettering was, I mean, it was a solid sticker, it left behind these marks. And you can see it kind of up here is probably the best way for you to see it. Let's see, I'm trying to get you the right angle. Yep. See up in here? See how it's really shiny? Well, that's that paint is in better shape than the surrounding area was beneath the sticker, and the adhesive had something to do with it. I mean, it's really nice under there. So uh, I did a single pass. There's a lot of uh, really fine scratches in the paint, but I got this door really cleaned up. The two door stickers, I had one heck of a time getting the adhesive off. I tried everything, WD-40, Goo Gone. I, mean, I, I tried to get a little more aggressive with a spin brush. I tried razor knives, little plastic razor knives. And this stuff here, it just will not leave. Now, I know, I know this isn't, ideal or what you'd probably want to do because if left on too long it can cause damage to the paint but I did use acetone on the other side and uh, it didn't do anything to the paint I cleaned it off and I've compounded it since I'll get some spray wax on a quick protect it but um, that's really what it takes just a little dab of acetone on a microfiber you peel it off and then I clean it and uh, you just work in little areas so you gotta be very very careful doing it because acetone is a highly effective paint remover. I mean, that's kind of what it does if I understand correctly. But um, there's, there appears to be, you know, zero damage to the paint on this side. I mean, I can see the scratches. They're, they're kind of all over the door, but they were where I was kind of working it to get it off. So even this plastic tools I had were putting fine scratches into it. Nevertheless, I'm gonna finish up the other side and uh, the whole car could really use a compound, but like many things, we've talked about this before on the channel, there's like a diminishing return. Is this worth having absolutely perfect paint on? I don't think so. I do not think that this car needs that because it's not gonna make it worth much more. And that's a lot of work. The paint seems to be fairly hard. Um, I'm using Meguiar's, what is it, M2, this is 205. I can't find my bottle of 105. I think it's a little more uh, rough or abrasive. And that would be really good on this door with my white uh, polishing pad. I do have a orange cutting pad I could switch to, but uh, like I've said before, and people know 
that I've done detailing, you use kind of the least impactful technique necessary to achieve the result, because you don't want to overdo it. You can't put material back on the surface. So enough about that. I'm gonna clean up this door, so I'll at least have all of the sticker residue off of the car. I'll have a couple of holograms to deal with, but I'll probably just focus on those areas the most. Uh, the hood, I may end up doing the whole thing. Who knows, this might spiral into a whole paint correction, but at any rate, the car just cleaned up with having all this stuff cleared off, makes it look way better, and we're gonna continue this in the next upload. I gotta do valve cover gaskets, the car needs a coolant flush, I gotta do a lot of cleaning, the interior is disgusting. I mean, it's it's been smoked in, it's been lived in, it's just, it's gross. So, it's gonna be a night and day difference with this thing just cleaned up and looking proper. So, we did a little bit of work on the Trans Am, we picked up a Corvette, that's pretty much it for this upload. We got a good head start on the Corvette project behind us. Um, if you want to support the track or see more of these projects, uh, it's a great way to support is actually by going to brmpwi.com. Sorry, furnace just kicked on. It's still winter here. Uh, best way to do it is go to brmpwi.com and pick up a t-shirt, sweatshirt, coffee mug, a big beer, pint glass, or maybe a couple stickers, and uh, it'll actually help progress out immensely because the track is pretty much funded by track activities and YouTube. So, appreciate you guys watching. I'm going to keep working on the Corvette here, and we'll see you guys in the next video.